said, this must be surreal for <laughs> Eber Prettyman. <laughs> it, it was surreal. I, I might tell you a little bit about the, uh, <clears throat> the film. The film was done by George Stevens, the son of the great uh, movie director. And uh, he asked me to become involved because uh, Sidney Poitier and um, Burt Lancaster were playing Thurgood Marshall and John W. Davis, and they weren't sure what to do, uh, how to stand, what, what, how, to, how to pontificate, what to hold on to, what to look at, and so forth. So um, I was asked to come down to Florida where they built a courtroom uh, to teach these two how to, um, uh, how to argue before the court. And it was funny, that night, uh, George and I uh, had lunch with, um, had dinner with, with uh, Burt Lancaster and his new wife. And uh, George said, uh, introduced him, this is Barry Prettyman, and Burt said, oh, no, no, I, I've met him downstairs. And George said, no, no, this is the real Barry Prettyman. <laughs> but um, that was a lot of fun, uh, being involved in that movie. <clears throat> Obviously, your boss, and as well as you, are portrayed there. Uh, give us a walkthrough as to how much was Hollywood and how much was fact, from your perspective. Well, um, I, I, I told George the, the things that were sort of out of whack, and uh, he, he pled, uh, you know, he had to make it interesting. <laughs> and uh, he had to make it move and so forth. So it's, it's not way off track, but it, it is somewhat. Justice Jackson. Yes? Sir, they just took him to Walter Reed, a heart attack, sir. Mr. Justice Jackson. I'm Earl Warren. Sir, he's resting. Mr. Prettyman is handling his calls. Oh, hello, Barrett. Hello, Mr. Chief Justice. They say he'll make it. Ah. Uh, I talked to him this morning. I think he'll be okay. Good, good. Barrett, uh, as soon as you think he's up to it, ask him to read this. It's important. I know, sir. What happened was I was in the hospital room with Justice Jackson when uh, the Chief Justice arrived. Uh, the Chief Justice made it clear that he had come to talk about something very important. So I excused myself, went down the hall, waited until he left. He left a draft of the opinion with the Justice who had read it. And he didn't comment on it at all. He gave it to me and asked me to go read it. So I went down the hall again and read it and came back. And he said, what do you think? And I said, well, it hasn't got very much law in it, but I think really it's really effective. I mean, in the sense that anybody can understand it, really. And it doesn't do some of the things that you're worried about. And he agreed. And he said, uh, uh, I have some thoughts about changes we can suggest. And uh, as I remembered, I went to see the Chief Justice thereafter and suggested several things, one or two of which he adopted, but others of which he rejected because they would have applied outside the field of education. And he wanted to make it very clear for quasi-political reasons that uh, the opinion only related to education little bout with one's mortality as a way of focusing the mind. Since the end of the Civil War, the United States has been hesitating between two worlds, one dead, the other powerless to be born. What you have written is quite remarkable. In very plain and understandable words, it tells the nation what must be done and why. I'm with you, Earl.
because he uh, he told Warren that he liked the opinion and and uh, when I went back to Warren with a few suggested changes, it was with the understanding that Jackson was going to go along. During the time frame, he's in the hospital, and it was for how many weeks was he in the hospital? Uh, I've got it here, but I, I don't, I don't remember it's offhand. March 30 to May 17. Okay. Seven, seven weeks. During that period of time, were there other justices who came and visited and were maybe politicking? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that because I wasn't there when they, when they came. I, I don't know. My guess is that not many of them did simply because they didn't, you know, he had a heart attack. He was still there, and um, he was under doctor's orders to stay there. And my guess is that they wouldn't have taken a chance on either upsetting him or wearing him out or whatever. So I don't, but I don't know the answer to that. I think I've only seen one reference. Frankfurt may have visited him. Yeah. Him there. Were you in constant contact with him while he was in the hospital? No. Um, I think I, uh, I I think I visited him again, and I think we may have talked once, twice on the phone, but uh, I was not in regular contact for the same reason. He he was supposed to be forgetting business and uh, getting rested. It seems certainly it's so dramatic as the, even the scene unfolds here on the the movie. Uh, you knew he was coming. Right? Yes. Yeah, you knew that. I think you'll want to be in court this morning, boys. You one of the few folks who Earl Warren said, "Hey, boys, time to come in." No, uh, Jackson had sent word, and and you know, through a secretary for one thing, she was going to tell me make sure that I was going to be there. We we had we'd worked pretty closely, and it, it isn't the kind of thing he would have kept from me. Right. Though it seems like some of the law clerks, your fellow colleagues really were not brought in to the level of which you were brought in in the case. Uh, we heard that, uh, that so, I mean, I didn't check each one out or anything, but we heard that several were not there because they hadn't been told it was coming down. Did you get a sense that the timing of the delivery of the decision was pretty much timed to Jackson's appearance? Did, for example, the Saturday conference, where they discussed the decision and that they were going to announce it on Monday. Did, you, did they know that Jackson was going to show up on Monday? You know, I don't know the answer to that. Um, he, he, I don't know how he made it clear <clears throat> that he would be there because I know it was a surprise to a number of people in the courthouse, uh, and I don't know whether it was a surprise to the other justices or not. My guess is that it was not a surprise to the Chief Justice. Welcome back. What's the reaction of the audience when they, Earl Warren's reading this, and even the opinions had not been, the decision had not been passed out ahead of time, and then he gets to that point where you saw in the film uh, unanimously, which was not written in, but sort of added by Yeah. Him. Well, I, I remember quite distinctly that when he used this word, there was an intake of breath in the, uh, in the courtroom, uh, because that is the one thing nobody had anticipated. I see that in Earl Warren's own memoirs of the occasion, he says that there was a visible reaction in the, uh, in the audience. And uh, that's what I saw and heard, too. We believe unanimously that it does. We conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place.